There's so much about these numbers that you will not understand unless you take a step back. So I'm going to take a big step back. I'm going to go all the way back to the beginning of numbers. Okay, the beginning of numbers. Now, numbers are just like what literacy and writing and all that kind of thing. They are a relatively speaking modern invention of mankind. Okay, numbers haven't existed for the amount of time that humanity's existed. It was, it was an introduced idea. Okay, but wherever we have recordings of numbers appearing. Numbers always begin in the same context. They always begin in the same context. And that context is counting. Okay? Now, counting is still something that is evident, like the, the fact that numbers started with counting, is still evident in a lot of things that you take for granted. For example, Roman numerals, Roman numerals, right? The first three numbers are written one, two, three. Right? You can see that counting is built into the representation of our numbers, right? The representation of our numbers. And it's not just the Romans. It's not just the Romans. In fact, more or less every counting system and all the symbols that we use, for example, um, the Chinese script and the Japanese script and so on, it looks like this. One, two, three, right? It's got the same pattern of counting built into it and in fact our numbers yes now four is interesting four is we'll, we'll get to four another time but I just want you to notice I just want you to notice that one two and three in this script is not all that different from one let me just draw it to make it really obvious two and three in our script not that different. It's just that you've been thinking so long of one and two and three as their own things that you we've sort of not remembered. The counting is where they begin. Okay. Question. Okay, we'll move on. Now here's the problem though. You remember I said numbers begin with counting. But very rapidly, very rapidly, numbers do not end there. In fact, if you take these numbers, we call them the natural numbers or the counting numbers, it's pretty obvious to see that the natural numbers are not the only kinds of numbers there are. The counting numbers sort of give rise to all these other kinds of numbers. For instance, very simple situations. If you've got like a whole number of objects, a counting number of objects, and a whole number of people or groups that you want to separate them out to or share them into, you quickly realize that they don't each get a whole or a counting number of pizza slices, right? Eight into three, it doesn't go Neatly, goes into two, goes into four, goes into one, right? But doesn't go into three. New numbers have to be introduced, right? In the same way, very quickly, the Greeks realized that even if you've got whole number lengths here and here, what you get out here is a different kind of number again. It's not another kind of number like this. It's not a ratio. It's something different. They argued for a long time as to what it was, but they knew it wasn't like these guys. It wasn't a counting number, it wasn't a rational number, and so on. Okay. So this whole history of the development of numbers is really about, well, you start here, everyone starts here. But when you start to combine these in different ways, you start to realize one, two, three, four, they're not enough. Okay. So let's think about this in a systematic way. Um, Draw up this table, if you like. It doesn't have to be big. Um, what we're doing here, like starting with counting and then talking about division. That's what this is, isn't it, right? Or talking about these lengths and so on. What binds all these ideas together is that we manipulate them through algebra. We manipulate them through the laws and rules of algebra and the operations, okay? So what we're going to put together here is a series of algebraic equations. We're going to use these familiar counting numbers. Those are our building blocks. And you'll see if we combine them in ways, and you already know about these ways mostly, if we combine them with plus, minus, times, divide, and uh, indices, exponentiation, which is very, very similar, not entirely identical, but very similar to the idea of repeated multiplication. Right? If you just take these five algebraic operations, right? then you will see all of these different kinds of numbers, they fall out. I, I want to give you some language and some, um, some notation to describe this. Okay? 
So for instance, if we think of a simple equation like x take away 5 equals 0. There's an equation for you. Okay? It has an answer. There's a solution to this, right? Or, or a root, if you like. Right? The solution, of course, to x minus 5 equals 0 is? X equals 5. It's x equals 5. Very good. x equals 5. Okay? So this is a simple example. This is still back in this region of counting numbers, right? Uh, but I want to get some um, more fine language and notation on this because as we've talked about before, language is power. Once you know how to describe something, once you have language to describe it, you can understand it, manipulate it, interpret it, and so on. So these counting numbers, our technical name for them, are the natural numbers, the natural numbers. And we have a symbol for it. I have showed it to you before, I think. Um, it's an N with extra lines on it. N for natural. Alright, that's pretty simple. That's it. That's in our counting number world, but it's pretty easy to get out of the counting number world. For instance, if I give you an equation like this, which is just as simple, just as simple, what's the solution? X, X equals negative 2, right? So we are pretty quickly, like I haven't even gone plus addi past addition and subtraction, right? I'm out of the counting number world already, right? Now, negative 2 is not a counting number. It's not a natural number in the technical sense of the word. Um, we have another name for this. Starts with an I. We call it integers, okay? Now, for reasons that will become clear in a second, even though the name of it is integers, we don't use an I here, uh, we use the character Z, uh, which we get from the Germans. It's, from the, it's an abbreviation of the German word Zahl, which means, ironically, counting, but anyway. Uh, these are the integers, that's the name, that's the symbol that you will see attached to integers. Okay. Alright, now we went past the natural numbers, we went past integers. If we stay with using the counting numbers to construct this thing, for instance, again, another simple equation, something like this. What is the solution to this algebraic equation? X equals a half, right? X equals a half. Now, this is still in familiar, familiar territory for us. This is a rational number, okay? It's a ratio between 1 and 2. A symbol for this, again, for reasons that will come clear in a second, we do not use R, rational. We use a Q, which stands for, not rational, but what word quotient. has to do with, yeah, thank you, quotients, right? This is a division number because that's kind of where it begins, where we get these rational numbers from. Q for quotient. Okay, now, there's one last category of um, numbers that we've been dealing with over the last many number of years, okay? And um, I can quickly come up with a solution, uh, an equation that will give me this. Something like, say, let's do this. So I've gone to um, exponentiation here, so I've got an index, but importantly, all of my numbers that I've used to build my equations, they're all counting numbers, right? Like, these are still the building blocks but you combine them in simple ways and you get weirdo different numbers over here. What is the solution, or rather, what are the solutions to this equation? Plus, plus, plus root. Okay, so x equals plus or minus the square root of 5. Okay? Now, square roots, where the number that's underneath the square root isn't a square number, um, these are not rational numbers. You can't write them. There's no fraction that this <coughs> is equal to, right? At least no fraction that's just built with counting numbers. So therefore, this is a different kind of number. It's irrational, right? Oh, it's but more irrational. widely speaking, it belongs to this class of numbers. Oh, real. The real numbers. Okay, so we've been talking about this for a long time. We talked about quadratics that have real solutions or don't have real solutions. Right? Now this has taken us a long way where you can do a lot of maths with real numbers, okay? But it doesn't quite take us all the way. Think about algebraic equations, right? And these simple tools that we've been using to build solutions, right? 